Hi everyone, today we learned about exponents and we started to talk about what would something to the zero power be, what do negative exponents mean, and also, and I might end up doing this in a separate video, but we also looked at today um, what happens when you multiply exponents with the same base. Is there some sort of pattern or some sort of shortcut? And so that's kind of what we did today is a lot of looking for patterns and trying to explain why things are the way that they are. So I'm going to start by evaluating all of these exponents up here. I'm going to start on the left, and I'm going to start with 2 to the 5th, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And if I multiply all of these 2's, what I end up getting is 32. So 2 to the 5th power is 32. 2 to the 4th power would be 16. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 2 to the 2nd power is 4. And 2 to the 1st power is 2. Now we're at the point where we get to 2 to the 0 power. And we want to ask ourselves, what would that be? Before we do that, I want you to look at each of these numbers and see if you can come up with a pattern of what you think is happening to each of these numbers and use that to figure out what 2 to the 0 power would be. So I'm going to give you guys a moment, pause the video right now, and then think about what the pattern is and how that would continue right here. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, now that you've had a moment to think, hopefully you came up with that 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. Each time, it's being divided by 2, right? So 32 divided by 2 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so what is 2 divided by 2? That would be... 1. So that's one explanation. It's not an actual proof or anything like that. That's one way to explain that any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. Any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. So if we look at 3 to the 0 power, that's 1. 27 to the 0 power is 1. Negative 27 to the 0 power is also 1. And let's see, let's try a larger number. 148 to the 0 power is still 1. And even with variables, so let's do x to the 0 power, even variables to the 0 power is still equal to 1. So essentially any number to the 0 power is going to be 1. So that's one of the key things that we learned in class today. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Anything, I'll write that as well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So even combinations of numbers and variables, like let's say we had, for example, 2x to the negative 4, y to the 7th, parentheses, all raised to the 0 power. That's still 1. And even all of this, 3x, y squared, d to the negative 3rd power, f squared, all over negative 9x cubed, y to the negative second power, d to the negative 1, f squared. If I raise all of that to the 0 power, as long as these parentheses are also here, that is still equal to 1. All right. So just keep that in mind. Anything to the 0 power is 1. OK, so next we are going to look at negative exponents. So if I continue this pattern of dividing by 2, this would be 1 half, this would be 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 
and 1 over 32. So see, as you're looking at this whole picture now, see if there's some relationship or any type of pattern that you see between those numbers right there. Now one thing that people noticed in class is that these numbers over here correspond to these numbers here on the left. The only difference is that these are fractions and these ones are not. So instead of 2 to the positive 1, that's 2. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4. 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, is 8. And 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 8. So it looks like these are the same as 1 for example, 2 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 1. 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 2. 2 to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 3. So as you can see, it looks like the fractions are just being inverted or flipped, and then the exponents are becoming positive. And so that's what negative exponents do. They move your exponent, the whole thing, to the other side of a fraction bar and then become positive. So next I'm going to show you guys a few examples of this. Okay, so the first example I'm going to show you guys is 3 to the negative fourth power. And 3 to the negative fourth power can be written as 3 over 1. And what this negative exponent is telling us to do is to move this to the other side of the fraction bar and make it positive. So this would be 1 over 3 to the positive 4, which ends up being 1 over 81. Another example that we did in class was 4 to the negative 2 power. Write that over 1, move it to the other side of the fraction bar, and we get 1 over 4 to the positive 2 power, which is 1 over 16. This also works for variables. For example, x to the negative 3 power. You can write that over 1, move it to the other side of the fraction bar, and we get 1 over x cubed, or 1 over x to the third power. This works with any number. Any number to the negative exponent we can move to the other side of the fraction bar. And in this case, we would have 1 over a to the p power. It even works for fractions, like 5 over 3 to the negative third power. We would actually invert the fraction. So instead of 5 thirds, we would have 3 over 5 to the third power which ends up being 9 over, oh, that's wrong, 3 cubed is not 9, 3 cubed is 27, and 5 cubed is 125. And if you don't understand how I got this number, I would recommend expanding this out. 3 fifths times 3 fifths times 3 fifths. And when you multiply all of the numerators, you do end up getting 27. And when you multiply all the denominators, you do get 125. So you should get the same thing. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about what happens when your exponent, your negative exponent, is on the bottom of a fraction. For example, 1 over 2 to the negative third. Well, it's the same idea. You're going to move it to the other side of the fraction bar. In this case, moving it to the top and making your exponent positive. So that is 2 thirds over 1. 2 thirds is 8 over 1. And 8 over 1 is the same as just 8. Anything over 1 is just itself. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try 1 over 5 to the negative 4. We can move that to the other side of the fraction bar, making it positive, or sorry, 5 to the positive 4 over 1, 
that ends up being 625. This also works with variables or letters. I'll do one of those after this. First I'll do negative, or sorry, 3 to the negative 2. So 1 over 3 to the negative 2. Move that 3 to the negative 2 to the numerator. And we get 3 to the positive 2, or 3 squared, over 1. And that will just be 9. And like I said, this works with variables as well. 1 over x to the negative 5 is the same as x to the positive 5 over 1, or just x to the fifth power. Lastly, we have 1 over a to the negative p, and once again, we move that to the top of the fraction bar, and we get a to the p over 1, which is the same as just a to the power of p. And that's really it. So essentially when you have a negative exponent, 1, you're going to move it to the opposite side. Oh, can't spell opposite. Opposite side of the fraction. and then make the exponent positive. Oh, and I'm going to try really quick to rewrite that with better handwriting. Okay, that's still not super great, but hopefully you can read it. It says, once again, move the exponent to the opposite side of the fraction bar and then make your exponent positive. So if you have any questions about this or what we did in class today, feel free to send me an email and I would be happy to answer your questions.